Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I am here with yet another topic and that's spinal dysraphism. In this part 1 video, we will discuss the open variety spinal dysraphisms and few of the closed ones. Okay, Congenital malformation of the spinal cord and the spine are described under this umbrella term that's spinal dysraphism. The most common type of birth anomaly is still the congenital heart diseases but the second most common type of birth anomaly is neural tube defects and the spinal dysraphism are one of the subtypes of this neural tube defects. These are most common in lumbosacral spine followed by the dorsal spine followed by the cervical spine and as the development of the spinal cord and spine is associated with development of another organs like the anorectal urogenital, upper GI, respiratory, spine, spinal cord, all these developments are interrelated. So the disease, other organ diseases should be suspected in cases of spinal dysraphisms also. For example, the bacterial syndrome and the association of spinal cord and the spine together in Klippel field syndrome. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the introduction part. Before starting this video, I want to clear one term and that's the neural placode. Okay the neural placode this term i'll take throughout this video neural placode let's remember one mnemonic for this and that's pft uh, the stages of development of neural tissue that's neural plate then the neural folds and then the neural tube okay so what is neural placode neural placode refers to the segment of non neurulated neural tissue which has actually its development frozen in neural plate stage okay so uh, we are not going to discuss the embryology proper just know that placode is like this neural plate p is a not is failing to develop into neural fold and subsequently neural tube so this neural placode is actually non neurulated neural tissue which has its development frozen in the neural plate stage okay uh, so the classification of spinal dysraphism is actually clinical and radiological based okay and that's open versus closed just see this picture when the skin adjacent to the swelling and the swelling is similar okay this is closed the skin is every everywhere the skin is same it's closed there is nothing open but when you see there is a lesion with defective overlying skin or the subcutaneous tissue means we are dealing with the open variety okay so uh, there are things like pseudo epithelization or like presence of skin even in the open varieties but uh, we will discuss that thing in um, later on this video so what's open is like direct exposure of the neural tissue and the meninges to the environment as there is deficient skin or the subcutaneous tissue while in the closed one the skin or subcutaneous tissue is present so there is no direct direct exposure of the neural tissue and the meninges to the environment okay so once we uh, we have identified we saw the child that whether this is open or whether this is closed we have differentials in our mind okay when this is open we have just three or four differentials in our mind that is myelomeningocele myelocele or myelocytosis hemi myelomeningocele hemi myelocele or myelocytosis okay and when the skin is intact we have two differentials like whether there is any mass like in this case there is this subcutaneous mass so we have this differentials and when there is no mass then we further classify into simple dystrophic states and the complex dystrophic states and then there are differentials so we will discuss this further in the video no need to mug up this chart at this point of time okay so uh, let's discuss the individual spinal dystrophisms in this part one video we will discuss these open forms and the close variety with the subcutaneous mass these two will discuss in part one and rest of these we will discuss in part two of this video okay so the very first open spinal dystrophism the most common one is actually the milo meningo seal okay the milo meningo seal so the two main characteristics of this milo meningo seal is there is this is open variety means there is exposure of the neural tissue and the meninges to the environment and the second thing is expansion of the subarachnoid space these are the two characteristics these are most common in the lumbosacral segments so we have to look for see this is uh, this the pictorial diagram there is defect in the posterior element of the involved vertebra this is spina bifida there is defect in the posterior element okay spina bifida 
then the overlying skin and so this is the subcutaneous tissue and the skin this is see there this is deficient here so the skin or the subcutaneous tissue is deficient here there is spina bifida then there is this neural tissue or the placode which is exposed directly to the environment there is this expansion of the subarachnoid space which is herniating through this defect in the posterior element the expanded subarachnoid space is herniating through the defect in the posterior element forming a sac like structure that's meningocele and into that meningocele there is neural placode also herniating so milo meningocele and look this is the this is the level of the skin subcutaneous tissue it has risen above the level of the skin surface forming a mass like structure and it is well exposed to the skin to the environment as there is no overlying skin or the subcutaneous tissue the spinal cord also can enter this and see the nerve roots see the nerve roots that are arising from the ventral surface of this placode are going into the neural foramina okay so this is milo meningocele the two main characteristics that is exposure to the environment and there is this expansion of the subarachnoid space which is herniating through the spina bifida forming a sac like structure so this in mr diagram what we can see there is this defect in the posterior element that is spina bifida there is herniation of the expanded subarachnoid space and there are neural elements the neural placode also there okay and the overlying skin is deficient this is the fetal mri actually okay this is the expanded subarachnoid space meningocele the neural placode okay so this is milo meningocele the second one is the milo seal and the milo cisus the main difference from milo meningocele is there is no expansion of the subarachnoid space okay so there is exposure to environment because there is no overlying skin or the subcutaneous tissue but there is no expansion of the subarachnoid space there is no meningocele formation okay so we can see the spina bifida the defect in the posterior elements okay through which the neural placode is actually herniating see the overlying skin is deficient here but this neural placode is at the level of the skin and subcutaneous tissue it has not risen above the level surface of the skin because there is no expansion of the subarachnoid space okay so it is in cases of milocele it is flushed with the overlying skin at the same level while in milocytes the neural placode is actually exposed to the environment because there is no overlying skin or subcutaneous tissue but it is within the spinal canal okay this is the difference in milocele it is flushed with the skin while in milocytes it is depressed okay because there is no expansion of the underlying subarachnoid space everything rest is same but there is no meningocele see there is defect in the posterior element there is spina bifida there is neural placode like structure see the neural placode there is no overlying skin subcutaneous tissue but there is no expansion of the subarachnoid space erasing this neural placode above the level of the skin surface so this neural placode is actually flushed at the level of the skin that's milocele and depressed within this spinal canal in cases of milo cisis okay and the third and the last variety in uh, open variety is actually hemi okay hemi it can be milo meningocele okay or it can be like hemi milo seal or the milo cisis okay everything is same in hemi milo meningocele as milo meningocele except there is this hemi thing means there is diastomatomyelia associated at the same level of the spina bifida the cord splits into two halves at the level of the spina bifida and one of the hemi cord that is actually hemi placode which is for, which is non neurulated neural tissue is exposed to the is exposed to the environment and there is this asymmetric expansion of the subarachnoid space also in hemi milo meningocele and one of the hemi placode is extending is exposed into the meningocele and now uh, the other uh, hemi cord is uh, there but in some cases when uh, there is diastomatomyelia within a single neural sac then both the halves can become hemi placodes and both can herniate into the dural sac into the meningocele sac okay and what is hemi milocele everything is same like there is defect there is placode uh, without expansion of the subarachnoid space but it is flushed because there is no expansion of the underlying uh, this subarachnoid space okay so this hemi milo meningocele is like splitting of spinal cord at same level of this open spina bifida with there is discontinuity see there is discontinuity of, of the overlying skin and subcutaneous tissue at the side of the hemi placode that is exposed to the environment okay so 
hemimyloseal and hemimyelomeningoceal expansion or no expansion of the underlying subarachnoid space okay all these open variety of spinal dystrophisms can be associated with ornal chiari type 2 malformation okay where there is associated see in this diagram there is associated smaller posterior fossa with herniation of the cerebellar tonsil vermis or the brain stem below the level of the foramen magnum there is this inferior descent there is there is smaller posterior fossa and it can be associated with supra tentorial hydrocephalus callosal dysgenesis and tectal beaking so all these open varieties can be associated with ornal chiari type 2 malformation okay now we are i think uh, clear with these open varieties open spinal dysapisms the myelomeningocele the myelocele and the myelocytes and the hemimyelomeningocele and the hemimyelocele or the hemimyelocytes okay So now let's discuss the closed spinal dystrophism and uh, with the subcutaneous mass involving these three four varieties okay so uh, let's classify the closed spinal dystrophism with subcutaneous mass they can be there can be lipomas with dural defect okay and that involves the lipo myelomeningocele okay the lipo myelocele and the lipomyelocytes okay these are the lipomas with dural defects another kind of closed variety with subcutaneous mass is the myelo i'm sorry that's meningocele just meningocele there is no herniation of placoid only there is a herniation of uh, expanded subarachnoid space and the third one is actually the terminal myelocystocele okay so the lipomas with the dural defects involving all these three varieties the meningocele and the myelocystocele so uh, let's discuss the first thing that is lipo myelo meningocele okay uh, in the first variety that is lipomas with dural defect okay there is this lipoma there is this adipose tissue growth okay there is this adipose tissue growth above the intergluteal crease that can extend asymmetrically into the buttock there is subcutaneous mass associated with these kind of uh, spinal dysapisms so there is the subcutaneous mass of adipose tissue above the level of intergluteal crease extending asymmetrically up to the buttock and uh, uh, there can be stent stigmas like capillary hemangioma dorsal uh, dermal sinus tract or any kind of dimples okay so lipomas means there is this subcutaneous mass of adipose tissue okay so in lipomas with dural defect there is this mass of adipose tissue there is subcutaneous mass and as we know it is closed variety there is this intact overlying skin and the subcutaneous tissue okay see there is this growth of the adipose tissue in the subcutaneous fat okay so there is this neural placoid actually which is seen herniating through the spina bifida there is this neural placoid herniating and this neural placoid is actually anchored to this adipose tissue growth so what we can see there is this fat placoid interface okay the cord and the the cord and the adipose tissue interface okay we have to look for this interface to differentiate between the three varieties of this lipomas with dural defects okay so in cases of first variety lipo myelo meningo seal okay see first thing the skin is intact okay then there is this spina bifida okay there is this herniation of dilated subarachnoid space through this defect that is there is meningocele there is this neural placoid herniating and which is anchored to this subcutaneous mass here okay so see this neural placoid and the adipose tissue interface this junction is located outside the spinal canal see this is the level of the spinal canal and this is located outside the level this is the t1 image this is the t2 image the same conformation the neural placoid and this adipose tissue mass this interface is located outside and as the name suggests myelomeningocele means there will be this expansion of the subarachnoid space which is seen herniating okay there is this asymmetric uh, expansion uh, because of the adherence of this neural placoid to the 
overlying adipose tissue the cord and the lipoma interface this interface is located outside the vertebral canal and it usually occurs off midline with traction of the placode towards the lipoma on one side and the meningeal herniation on the other side okay this is lipomyelomeningocele the second variety is lipomyelocele or the lipomyelocytosis the same difference see this there is this neural placode herniation but there is no expansion of the subarachnoid space as in cases of myelocele or the myelocytosis and this overlying skin subcutaneous is intact there is this adipose tissue growth here and this fat and the placode interface this interface is look this is the level of the neural arch so this is this interface is located within the spinal canal okay so this interface is at the level of the neural arch in cases of lipomyelocele and it is depressed within the spinal canal in lipomyelocytosis okay the subcutaneous mass growth the adipose tissue penetrates into the spinal canal and attaches to the tethered cord the spinal canal can be expanded in this also but not due to the meningeal herniation but depending upon the size of the adipose tissue that is penetrating into the spinal canal okay and lipomyelomeningocele lipomyelocele and the lipomyelocytosis the next thing is the meningocele in cases of meningocele there is just this spina bifida defect in the posterior element and there is this herniation of the meningeal lining with the subarachnoid space there is no herniation of any neural tissue into this so these are uh, very less symptomatic cases okay there can be some stigmas associated with this like the cutaneous dystrophy hemangioma or any tail like protrusion but remember there is there can be some redundant there can be some redundant nerve tissue nerve roots or hypertrophied phylum terminal that may course within this meningocele so this is simple meningocele where there is just herniation of csf in contained in its meninges there is no herniation of neural tissue so these are usually milder forms mild neurological symptoms and the last one in this category is the myelocystocele okay these can be terminal myelocystocele or the non terminal myelocystoceles okay so what happens in the terminal ones there see there is this spinal cord which is actually low lying and the central canal of this spinal cord is ending in a large hydro syringomyelic cavity which is herniating through this defect okay so see see this the this is the syringohydromyelic cavity of the spinal cord which is seen herniating through the spina bifida into a meningocele okay there is already this herniation of the subarachnoid space and into the posterior wall of this meningocele this syringohydromyelic cavity is anchored okay and remember this central syringohydromyelic cavity is not communicating with this meningocele okay so this is terminal myelocystocele the spinal cord just should end into a cone like structure but in this cases the cord is low lying and not just low lying but the central canal is dilated and ending into a large syringohydromyelic cavity and apart from this there is meningocele already present and both this does not communicate this is terminal myelocystocele and these are associated with oeis complex that is omphalocele exostrophy of urinary bladder or the cloaca imperforate anus and the spinal dystrophism there is this non terminal myelocele myelocystocele also uh, they are not very common but here what happens is the uh, posterior wall of the hydrosyringomyelic cavity herniates through the spina bifida into the meningocele with the anterior wall of the spinal cord in the vertebral canal okay so this is myelocystocele okay so i think uh, this subcutaneous mass category is also clear like in cases of lipoma with dural defect okay you have to you have to look for the uh, cord and lipoma interface when it is outside it is uh, lipomyelomeningocele when it is within the spinal canal and it is myelocele or the myelocytosis meningocele no neural tissue herniation and myelocystocele that is meningocele plus hydromyelic cavity of the low lying cord also okay so uh, let's see you in the part 2 of this video